<laughs> Is that a real cat? No. Oh, but it's it blinked. A, it's a stuff. Yeah. It blinked. It's stuff. Well, it would. It's had about eight of those buns. And uh, just while we've got the buns there, it is, of course, the... Uh, you sure that's not alive? <laughs> <laughs> Go and check that, Bill. Um, what do I do? Well, pat it, it, pat it. Um... Oh, oh, look at that. <laughs> look at that. It's cute. It's crying. You've heard it. Does it say me out? No. Anyway, oh. the, the reason for the buns, of course, is uh, the match yesterday was all for uh, breast cancer oh, awareness. And uh, oh, the, the buns, if you go and buy those buns today <laughs> from any... Just, please, it's an important message here. Yeah. So, uh, if you go and buy those buns today from any Baker's Delight store, 100% of everything sold will go to the Breast Cancer Network. So, uh, they do amazing things, support uh, for, for men and women. Uh, for women and men who actually suffer uh, the insidious disease yes. that is breast cancer. So uh, even if you don't want a pink bun, go down to Baker's Delight today and get yourself one because you know it's going to a very, very worthwhile cause. All very right, well now. said. Oh, thanks very much, Bill. And just keep an eye on that cat because I've got a funny feeling it is still alive. All right, uh, while we're talking about the game yesterday, Bill, take us through it because this was a very handy and a much-needed win for the Melbourne Footy Club. And we've got Sam Frost here. Frosty, uh, welcome. Right. Sunday yeah. Footy Show. Thanks for having me. Good. Good to be here. Now, tell us uh, yesterday because uh, let's have a look at scores first, mate. You had a win. Nice little win there. Good win indeed. I love the way our former James Harms yesterday. I thought he was outstanding. But there was some rain before the game and the first quarter, or first 10, 15 minutes was very, very slippery. It was, yeah. Yeah, no, but, um, we don't mind playing in the wet, but it does make it a bit harder to score. And, yeah, it was sort of looking like it was going to be one of those days, but it cleared up a bit, which was good. And the, Haw <laughs> <laughs> and the Hawks were outstanding. Oh, they were very good early. They kicked four goals to your two. And they started the game really, really well indeed. Uh, yeah, yeah, they did. Um, they came out pretty hot. And, um, yeah, it was looking like it was going to be another, another tough weekend for us. But, yeah, no, we, we came out a lot better in the second half. You did Good. indeed. Bruce was kicking goals, also Jack Gunston. This was a great goal, just to open them up here and over the top. But also, Harms, as I said, he went to O'Meara, who was good early, had 10, 11 touches in the first quarter, and old Chompers Harms went to him and was outstanding. Yeah, that's the good thing about a guy like Harms, is he can sort of do his own thing, but he can also play a role on a guy if yep. he's hot, so he does that really well. How's it been, Frosty, uh, within the club? Because that was win or season over, basically, but take us inside the Melbourne Footy Club to start this year because there's been a bit of pressure on. Yeah, it has been tough. I think they've done a really good job of staying positive with us and the coaches and staff have taken responsibility uh, along with the players, so it's been a whole club sort of feel, which is great. Um, has been a lot of pressure on, but we sort of went into this game, tried to go clean slate, forget about the last six weeks and just kind of al almost start over in a way. We had a few days off. Um, after the last round because we had a longer break. So, yeah, it was a bit of a clean state, clean slate, fresh start. And, um, yeah, it seems to have worked. Sam, Sam, before I go to one of your clips from yesterday, which was brilliant late in the game, but just want to ask you, I thought uh, against Richmond uh, on, the, on Wednesday night last round, you guys uh, changed your setup behind the ball a little bit because uh, I felt like you've been getting badly exposed, obviously, with the, the, obviously the teams chipping it over the back. Uh, yeah. Didn't work front and forward of centre against uh, Richmond, but it was much better yesterday. Talk us through the adjustments in the game style. Yeah, so yesterday we wanted to control control the ground a lot better. Um, yeah, teams are getting too many easy coast-to-coast -coast goals, so we wanted to control sort of the back space. And, you know, Hawthorne Smalls want to take you up and run you out mm. the back, so we were trying to deny that. And it seemed to work. We slowed them up, up the field, and, yeah, it really helped us. Yeah, well, well done on this last clip. It takes a lot of courage, Sam, to uh, do yes. what you did, to uh, leave your man there rough. But also, have a look at this here. Yeah. With a minute, what, 21 seconds ago, and Frosty just goes bang, bang. Oh, and yeah. gets it, throws it out. Yeah, throws but anyway, it. <laughs> it was a good time. Is that a throw? Uh, not sure. It, it wasn't called, so yeah, yeah. if the umpire didn't call it, it wasn't a throw, I suppose. Yeah, but, right. um, Sounds like you tried some interesting things during the week. One was the hypoxic training. The other one was <laughs> this that we uh, we noticed pre-game. Take us through this new war cry that you've um, established. Oh. Who's leading this? Uh, Alex Newbourne led that. Um, we do a little bit of this in pre-season just to get going before our, our main sessions and uh, it's normally a different person each week gets to come up with something to get the boys fired up. It can be funny or motivational, so yeah, that was Neil Bullen. Well, um, I don't know whether you saw the show earlier today, but Kane Corn suggested that, uh, Kane down here, suggested that uh, Nathan Jones and also Jordan Lewis not be selected again. Um, based on their performance yesterday. What, what no, did no, they... hang on. Not based on their performance yesterday. Based on their performance for the year. Oh, well, that makes it better. Um, so, what, what, I mean, what do they bring to the club that you would counter that argument, if, in fact, you want to counter that argument? 
Oh, well, obviously, leadership's the first thing that comes to mind. Louis playing down back with him. Uh, he settles everyone when things aren't going well. Uh, he's got a lot of experience to draw on, obviously. And Jonesy, you just know he's going to be a, a fearless sort of leader. So, yeah, I mean, whether their, their form's wavered or whatever, yeah, it's, they're, they're really good guys to play with. You sort of walk a bit taller with their experience and their competitiveness. Mm. Billy pointed out the fact that uh, James Harms went to O'Meara after quarter time. O'Meara was out of control in the first quarter. 11 disposals. They were getting inside 50 after inside 50. It was a brave move from Simon Goodwin to break up the midfield mix and do that to lock down one player. But only eight possessions after quarter time. It was a winning move, and almost a match-winning move. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, and like I said about Harms, he, he can play a really good role. And we were losing the contested ball, I think, early. And we evened that up. And I think we ended up plus 30, roughly. Um, yeah, so great, great move, obviously, and, and good he's got the confidence in Harmsy to do a job like that. I was going to talk about Harmsy today because I'm an avid listener of his podcast, and he had this to offer up in his mm. podcast during the week. Darren uh, writes, have you ever compared your chompers with those of Tony <laughs> Jones? <laughs> <laughs> I've done the Sunday footy show, and I, he was on it, and um, the boys made me... <laughs> made you call him chompers and he hated it so um, <laughs> I think mine are better to be honest with you. <laughs> confidence you uh, I reckon yours might be real though so that's probably what makes yeah. it uh, a little bit a little bit different Stanners Stanners mm. text him right. <laughs> 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 don't come Monday no, <laughs> the just before we show this Christian Petrarca um, nearly drowned if, if it's right uh, during the week how was he? Because he has trained a couple of times, obviously played yesterday. Well, this was the medicine ball in the water. The medicine mm. ball, what's it called? Hypoxic. Hypoxic. Yeah, hypoxic, hypoxic training. Yeah, yeah. Medicine no, was, ball in the water. Yeah, I wasn't down there, but from all reports, he was fine after. He probably just needed to take a minute to uh, to compose himself, I think. <laughs> but, yeah, it's sort of the nature of hypoxic training. You've got to push yourself a bit, get a bit uncomfortable. He must have just flirted with the line a little bit too much. But, mm. no, I think he, he would have just been a bit lightheaded, needed a bit of help getting out of the pool, but he was fine. Yeah, full training all week and... Yeah. yeah, played yesterday, Gee, obviously. I'll, he can tell you what, if, if Sam ever wants to give up football, he could always become a voiceover man. Yeah, never listen to that voice. <laughs> Smith. Have a listen to yeah. it. Uh, but have a look at this shot on goal from Petrarch. I don't know what he's thinking about. But uh, nice mark, very nice mark, and needed a goal here. And Petrarch goes back. He hits it with his shin. Have a look at this. <laughs> Petrarch, is a shocker for old Petrarch. But um, look at this. That is unbelievable. He just hit it wrong. Ball drop. Yeah, too high. Yeah. Too high, Lordo. Yeah. yeah, just before you do the votes, Bill, I just want to ask one I reckon Melbourne fans would want to know. So there's been a lot of reasons for the one and or the two and five start at Melbourne. So it's been injuries, you know, lack of training, surgeries, hunger, game style changes. Do you think it's a combination of everything, or is there one in particular I reckon cost you to start this season? Uh, yeah, it's a good question. I'm not too sure to be honest. We we try not to really make any excuses for it. Obviously, people will talk about these these potential reasons, but, yeah, maybe a combination of things. I don't really know, to be honest. Yeah. All right, some votes here, Frosty. Here we go. Harms, the old chomp chomp. He did give away two goals with 50-metre penalties, but he was outstanding, Clayton Oliver. Max Gorn, I thought he was the best ruckman on the ground, and Liam Shields was probably Hawthorne's best player. And Frosty just down there underneath there. <laughs> just, on, just on Harms, Bill, is a credit to the coaching as well, because last week we saw O'Meara have 20 in the first half. Mm. Carlton did nothing about it. Eventually right. he has 43 and they mm. win the game, whereas O'Meara has 11 in the first quarter. And then they actually do the something game. about it yep. and they keep him to only eight after mm. quarter time. So it was a good move. To the taggers. Every the club should have a tagger. They should, they? Bill. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm. All right, good work. OK, thanks very much for coming in. Hey, just one other Thank thing. Uh, David King. <laughs> David King referred to you as uh, Premiership Kryptonite. How'd you cope yeah. with that? How'd you say that? People are going to say what they're going to say. It <laughs> doesn't bother me too much. What did it mean, by the way? I haven't heard it, TJ. So. You told me to ask. No, I didn't. No, <laughs> All, right. All right, Sam, thanks very much for coming yeah, in, mate. We'll take a break me. on the Sunday well, footy um, show. Cheers, thank when you. we come back, it's the time capsule, a special edition Ooh. of this time capsule. Sam will be leading the charge. Ah, good. Good work, mate.